Welcome to Two Minute Anesthesia and Critical Care. We're going to discuss EVGs with reference to the indications, contraindications, placement, drainage, complications and removal. The insertion of an external ventricular drain or EVD is one of the most common new surgical procedures. First described by Claude Nicolas Lacat in 1744 when he punctured the ventricle and left a wick in situ for congenital hydrocephalus. It's defined as a temporary device to drain CSF from the ventricle in the brain. Please check out other videos relating to ICP, cerebral blood flow and CSF flow physiology. There are multiple practices for assessment of ICP. Examples include an ICP bolt, an EVD, and also an optic nerve sheath diameter assessment. The EVD is a gold standard approach for the measurement of ICP as it allows re of the pressure transducer as required. However, it is extremely invasive and therefore it has associated complications. What are the functions? The functions of an EVD include measurement of ICP, which provides a value in waveform, drain CSF, the clearance of blood or infection, and aid during healing post new surgical procedure. There are multiple contraindications for EVD insertion. Examples include coagulopathy, local scalp infections, but also intracranial abscesses. Now let's look at the insertion sites for the EVD catheters. There are multiple described points, an example of which is a cocoa point, approximately 10 centimetres posterior to the nasal or the nasal bridge, and 3 centimetres to the right or left of the midline. Or the Fraser point, which is a prior to occipital approach. So the sterile catheter is then placed into the skull, dura, and brain parenchyma into the lateral ventricle on the same side, ideally to the foramen of Monroe, the intraventricular foramen. A range of different AVD catheters have been described, the aim of which is to reduce the risk of intraventricular infection and therefore antibiotics can cover the catheter in addition to silver which has been shown to reduce the risk of infection. Now we move from the EVD catheter to the EVD which is essentially five components, tubing, adjustable stopcocks, transducer monitor setup, a levelling manifold and an adjustable EVD burette CSF collection reservoir. So we move from the patient to the drain as shown in the diagram. The EVD catheter is placed in the ventricle. This is connected to the EVD tubing. Within the tubing there is multiple three-way access points. This is followed by a transducer to enable pressure measurement which can be displayed in a graphical form. However, this requires levelling and zeroing. There may be additional access points within the tubing before moving along to the collection chamber to determine output and there's also a drainage bag. The EVD output is variable and the production increases with age. Usual rate in adults is approximately 20 mL per hour or 500 mL per day. There's a range of EVD systems available on the market. As you can recall from the previous slide, there's a collection chamber and pressure level, which is usually denoted in centimetres of water or millimetres of mercury. The EVD should be suspended, primed, flushed, zeroed and the pressure level set. Most systems do not allow simultaneous drainage and pressure assessment. Every time a patient moves, the EVD should be re-leveled. If the patient is in the supine position with the head in the neutral position, the level of the EVD system should reflect the tragus of the ear. However, if the patient is on the lateral side, the level of the EVD should be the mid-sagittal line, i.e. between the eyebrows. The amount of CSF drainage depends on the pressure difference between the ICP and the height of the chamber. For example, if the EVD is set at 5 cm of water, when the ICP is greater than 5 cm of water, CSF will flow into the low pressure system, i.e. the EVD, thus enabling drainage. So who determines the height of the drainage system? This is usually the neurosurgical team and it's usually between 5 and 20 cm of water. Indications for high levels include patients with unsecured subarachnoid hemorrhage to prevent rapid CSF drainage and thus minimise changes in the transmural pressure across the aneurysm, which can result in the risk of re-bleeding. This is a classical ICP waveform with pressure in millimetres of mercury and time in seconds. There's three points. P1 is the arterial pulsation, P2 is the intracranial compliance and P3 is aortic valve closure. Complications of EVDs can be classified to those which occur during the surgical procedure 
and also those which occurred during the ICU or HDU stay. However, they are largely interchangeable. Common complications include bleeding, misplacement, dislodgement, blockage and infection, which involves ventriculitis, meningitis, abscess formation and also subdural empyemas. EVD-related infections are very significant and relatively common and can lead to increased morbidity and thus mortality and increased healthcare costs. Rapid drainage of large volumes of CSF from the ventricle, classically more than 15 and 20 mL per hour, can result in collapse of the ventricles, which may lead to shrinkage of the cerebral hemispheres away from the skull and dura. This can create tension on the bridging veins, leading to the formation of an acute subdural hematoma. Ventriculitis from EV deplacement is a common complication, occurring in approximately 10% of patients. It's defined as inflammation of the endopinal lining of the cerebral ventricles, commonly due to infection. This could be bacterial, virus, fungal or parasitic. Risk factors include intracerebral hemorrhage, systemic infections, insertion attempts requiring multiple, and frequent sampling or irrigation. Clinical features include fever, CNF symptoms including headache and low GCS, and also local complications including erythema, tenderness and discharge. Diagnosis involves CSF sampling, which can be difficult as the initial CSF results may not be normal, and also CT findings, which may show debris within the ventricles, but also enhancement and also ventricular dilation. The catheter should be removed and antibiotics should be given. Intrathecal antibiotics can be administered with certain indications. However, it's important to prevent this. Therefore, antibiotics should be given insertion of the EVD, have early removal of the EVD and good nursing care. Weaning of the EVD can be a gradual approach or you can move rapidly to a clamping trial. A more prolonged approach involves increasing the height of the EVD, i.e. 5 cm per day, over a period of time to challenge the patient to ensure they are not drain dependent before the EVD is clamped. A clamping trial may accelerate EVD weaning, however the ICP should be continuously monitored and if the pressure increases in a sustained fashion, the EVD should be unclamped. As always, thank you for listening.